can I say, Max? Except I'm sorry. I paid you a lot of money for useless information. I'd hardly call it useless. There are very few people who know the existence of this stopover. And fewer still who know of this eight million pound shipment. I'm waiting for my money. You have a long wait, Max. The money. All right, all right. Because getting those diamonds is next to impossible now. Surely a warehouse doesn't make that much difference. This warehouse does. It means bringing in at least four other people. The only way into that building is through three feet of solid steel. You're exaggerating. Am I? To get in and out of there, I'll need the best explosives expert I can find. Two marksmen who can kill quickly in cold blood. And a driver capable of speeds that could win him a Grand Prix title.
So, it's agreed. Yep, London in two days. If there's any doubt in your mind, say so now. Nope, none at all. Anybody I know involved? No, mostly non-professionals. That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Perhaps. But then you're a bit of a risk, too, Chalmers. You've been out of action for a considerable time. Can I help it? You were the only one from that organization that wasn't picked up. Well, I'll move faster. Well, I hope so, Chalmers. I sincerely hope so. Fancy a night in the town? No, thanks. I have to go to Rome in the morning, and I planned an early night. I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. I find it very disappointing. What was that? Please, signore. No, niente. Pre conto, por favor. So do I, Max, but there it is. Well, let's discuss it further when you get to London. There's really nothing to talk about. I'd like to join you, but I can't. I'm in the wrong business. Gun running must be more profitable. I'm offering you half a million pounds. I know. I'd like to join you, but I can't. You're making a big mistake, Kevin. Yes? Angelique. Oh, Max. Where are you? At the airport. How did it go? I'm having a few problems with Kevin Klaas. I spoke to Dryden. He's keen, but at the same time apprehensive, which is natural, I suppose. He has a wife and two young children, and obviously he's worried about them should anything go wrong. How about Victoria? I talked to her on the phone. She's invited me to her club. Fine. Shall I come out and meet you? No, no, I'm having a drink with Gamel. This problem with class has to be resolved. We can talk later when I get home. All right. Goodbye, Max. Goodbye. Couldn't he have stayed away a few more days? Well, you were expecting him, weren't you? I know, but we could have had more time. We'll have plenty of time soon. It's with you two, in a way. He's useful. Yeah. Why don't you marry him? He never asked me. And I am married. And I don't love him. It's purely business. <laughs> the change.
Kevin Klaus must be worth a lot to you. Yes? No more than knowing the whereabouts of a few arms is to you. Really, Max? The whereabouts of a few arms mean to me not so very much. The arms are yours for the taking. Plus a cash bonus. Quite. Exactly how much? Ten thousand? Twenty. Fifteen. Well, as pleasant as our meeting has been, Max, I must leave you. You have the number of my bank account in Geneva. Of course. You will, um, call me when you've done the job. Is that necessary? Don't worry, I'll send the money to Geneva today. Yes? Hello, 
Kevin. I just thought I'd call to say, welcome back to London. That's not like you, Star. Now, what makes you say that? You don't waste time on pleasantries. I hear your employer has a spot of bother, Kevin. Now, knowing how you feel about the old man, I thought you should know. What kind of bother? Gamble wants his shipment. Why are you telling me? Well, Gamble's the kind of man who wouldn't stop at killing. I'm grateful, but that still doesn't answer my question. I don't want your gratitude, Kevin. I want you to join me in my venture. Now, I've probably saved your life and Kroll's. I think you owe me something. I'm working for Kroll. He can manage without you. You're wasting your talent with that old man. Look, Stein, I'm indebted to you, but that's the way it is. Maybe another time we can do business. Well, if you change your mind, you just have to ring me. It's not likely, but thanks anyway. So be it. You go and save the old man's life. Forget that you owe me a favor. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Come right in. Sends the old man on a long vacation. I'm sure you would agree he needed a holiday. Klaus. Hello, Kevin.
What's the matter with you? I thought you'd enjoy it. Good picnic, you said. Some picnic. As long as you're happy, that's all you care about. Because you wanted to come. I wanted a day out. Well, what do you call this? Your play therapy. Anyway, it's not your so-called day out. It's more like half a day. Yes. Only please call me Angelique. I'm sorry if I kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. Help yourself to another drink. I'm just changing into something more comfortable. Then I'll make us a coffee. Rather, isn't it? I only bought it today. Would you like to try it on? Uh, no, no thanks. Do you always hit the mark the way you did this afternoon? Usually. Were you impressed? Yes, but then I should have expected it. Why? Max wouldn't have wanted you if you weren't the best. Oh. How is he these days? He's fine. Good, good. Now you, uh, you said something about half a million pounds, or did I hear Romney? Well, that's right. Although it's hardly a job for a woman. That rather depends on the woman, I'd say, wouldn't you? Are you sure there's no one else? Oh, my God, the thought of working with that woman. You'll just have to keep away from her, or buy yourself a pair of cast-iron knickers. Well, you might have warned me. Well, it didn't occur to me. Now, stop worrying. Well, it's not you. She fancies. <laughs>
Yes. Good morning. Uh, is your husband in? Yes. And would it be possible for me to have a word with him? Yes, of course. Actually, he's in the garden. Be quicker this way. My name's Stein, Mr. Dryden. I hope you'll forgive this intrusion. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was told you'd be calling around. Oh, oh come in and have a drink. Sorry, took longer than I expected. Oh, Max, I feel awful. Charles called me. I thought that was over. So did I. I don't know why you ever married that bum artist. All right. Did you speak to Dryden? Yes, yes, I think he's right. Mm. Cars seem to be his whole life. Exactly. I'll get it. No, no, you run along. over this a million times. Stein, isn't it? You're being ridiculous. He's like a brother to me. You expect me to believe that? It doesn't really matter to me what you believe. I really must be going. Look, I'll kill him. I'll swear. Don't be so childish. What the hell do you see in him? You're making a scene. He keeps you, is that it? If you like. Each of these contains 5,000 pounds. It's your spending money for the next two days. Now, I want you to enjoy yourselves until we meet again on Wednesday, at which time I'll explain the objective in complete detail and its many hazards. Now, should you all decide that the venture is too risky, or for that matter, not even possible, then we'll part company and there'll be no hard feelings. I think 5,000 should cover your out-of-pocket expenses. Well, gentlemen, that's it for now. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I know what you're thinking. You always do. 20,000 pounds is a little more than grocery money. Why did you do it? They'll be eager for more. How can you be so sure? Angelique, I know human nature. I know that Dryden will give his money to his wife. I know that Class is getting bored with the mercenary business. And he's getting old. He's no more than 35 or 36 at the most. In his business, that's old. But I also happen to know he'd very much like to settle down. And as for Chalmers, well, what can you say about a man like that? He's so greedy, he'd kill his grandmother for 30 shillings. And Victoria? For her, it'll help pay for the favor she needs. You know, for once, I'd like it if none of them agree to go along with you. You're always so damn sure of yourself. drinks and come and sit down. Well, I'm very sorry, but we're not supposed to fashionize with the customers. How was your flight? Distasteful, as always. 
quite. Now for the details. I shall need you on the 20th. I know your requirements, Mr. Stein. However, as you can appreciate, this is quite a risky business. I'd like to know a little more about it. I'm paying you £10,000 for a specific job at a specific time. That's all you need to know. Now, is it yes or no? Is the date so important? I'm afraid the 20th is out of the question. Then when can you make it? Well, I trust you've all enjoyed the past two days, and I hope you're ready for the job ahead. The objective, gentlemen, is eight million pounds in uncut diamonds. Now, that is assuming we decide to perform the robbery and assuming we get away with it. Well, what do we do with diamonds? I'll exchange the diamonds two days after the robbery. Well, what do we do till then? Wait till you come back with the money. Oh, I'm too old for those tricks. You obviously don't trust me, Chalmers. Now, if I could continue uninterrupted for a few minutes. Our broker is in France. Now, he has other business to attend to, so his transaction with us won't be completed until the 22nd. I would have liked to have gone over the entire operation before coming to this part of our plan, however. Very briefly, we go to Jersey, take a cruise to France, meet our broker, and make the exchange. Unless, of course, you'd prefer to wait here until I complete the business and then return with the money. The choice is yours. I'll come along for the ride. Never mind the ride. I want to protect my interest. Then we can take it that you'll all be coming. Good. Well, that's the way I wanted it to be. A little adventure, a little cruise, a little reward. Now, can we go on? The building containing the diamonds has an alarm system that's connected to two nearby police stations. That's the first problem. And the next is that the safe holding the diamonds is of enormous dimensions. With plastic explosive, I can blow a safe any size, provided you dismantle the alarm system. Unfortunately, the system is sophisticated and absolutely impregnable. The instant we enter the building, the police will be alerted. And within 40 seconds, they'll be outside the building. Doesn't give us much time, does it? No, no. The only practical method of escape under the circumstances is a car. Max, you're a real comedian. You just said the police will be outside the building before we even get out ourselves. What do we do? Shoot our way through a dozen policemen? <laughs> Jump into our getaway car and speed through the streets like Al Capone? Absolutely right. I think we're all wasting our time. Now, admittedly, on the surface, it is rather crude and old-fashioned. But as I've pointed out, the alarm system cannot be dismantled and there's no other practical method of escape. Now, admittedly, it is risky. But weighed against other methods, it's logical and it should succeed but only if it's carefully organized. Now, we enter the building, we open the safe, we leave with the diamonds. We won't even be outside the building before the police are there to greet us. Well, then we shoot it up. Yes, at least Class and Victoria do. Now, with M16s and a good vantage point, they should kill all the police within seconds. They'll have two things in their favor. The police aren't armed, and we'll have the element of surprise. Am I right? You could be. The idea of killing policemen doesn't appeal to me. No, but I'm sure the money does. And there's no other way. Remember, we each get half a million pounds. I should think the risk is worth it. After all, they can't hang us now, can they? And the sentence for robbery can often be more severe than for murder. People die every day. Famines, wars, earthquakes. It's not quite the same thing, is it? Yes, it's precisely the same. People die, it doesn't matter how, they're just as dead. Has a famine ever spoiled your breakfast? Assuming we manage to kill them all, what then? The insurance companies have devised an elaborate and costly contingency plan. All streets leading from the area will be blocked by security patrol cars within a four-mile radius, five minutes from the alarm. And for our next miracle, we shall need five barley loaves and two small fishes. However, Dryden will have us outside this perimeter before it becomes operational. My plane will be standing by at a small airfield just outside London, and within minutes we'll be flying to Jersey. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're saying... You're saying one and a half minutes to get in and out, right? 
That gives me three and a half minutes to do four miles. That's an average speed of 70 miles an hour. Average! I'm aware of that, but the main streets will be sealed within one mile in one minute flat, making escape next to impossible. However, by using back streets, as you say, we'll have a full three and a half minutes. Unfortunately, these streets are rather narrow and winding. Oh, there is one thing I forgot to mention. Angelique and I won't be with you. We'll be at the airfield waiting for you to join us with the diamonds. Oh, yeah. Perhaps you could tell us why she gets half a million. Because that's the way it is, Dryden. Now, if you'd like to call it a day, you can leave right now and there'll be no hard feelings. It'll be difficult, but I can replace you. Klaus? Well, that leaves you two. Half a million. Sounds attractive, I'd say. Good. Then it's agreed. Would anyone like a drink? I can use one. It'll be like shooting ducks in uniforms. I'll have a double scotch. Make mine the same, will What do you think? Piece of cake. What do they keep the stuff in a dump like this for? Take that lock off with a crowbar. Don't be deceived, Chalmers. That door doesn't open. In fact, it's not a door at all. It's solid steel, three feet thick, built into the brickwork itself. Don't worry. A few ounces of plastic, well placed. I'll walk straight in. Good. Now, the car and the arms. We have to get out quickly, so there'll be no time for disposal once you arrive at the airfield. Well, that's no problem. I'll rig the car before we pull the job. That could be dangerous. I'll set a time detonator. The car will disintegrate minutes after we take it off. Well, I shouldn't be late at the airfield if I were you. There are just two flights of stairs, a small corridor, and then you're home. <laughs> you're being bleeding optimistic. Now, that attitude will get us precisely nowhere. I'll have to be quick. Bloody quick.
I don't want to hurt your feelings, Dryden, but the car doesn't look up to much. I don't care what it looks like. You're the expert. Work I put into it, I think I've wings it to fly. Oh, it's going to be some trick engineering over 80 miles an hour. Perhaps we should try and find an alternative. Oh, with 210 seconds. Dear, dear God. Well, if I don't make this turn, they'll scrape us off that wall. Oh, no. If I don't make this one, they'll scrape us off that one. It promises to be an exciting day. Straight up. It's too bad you won't be with us. Are you worried about something? I'm oh, sorry. Well, let's get on with it.
Hey, watch it, Klaus. We'll lose the bleeding thing. Bad nerves. Just waiting. I thought I was being humane. Can't possibly mean that. Look at them, playing like children, enjoying the anticipation of their money. Which they'll never see. Yes, but they're not aware of that, are they? You're really enjoying it, aren't you? Savoring their last day with morbid curiosity. Why the sudden concern? You're getting a larger share of our enterprise. You were nameless people, then. And now you know them, is that it? You really must grow up. You disappoint me at times. Uh huh? Where's that Angelique after then? She's probably going down to the beach. You better put some pants on that sexy Victoria will be chasing around the sand hills. Enjoy your game? It's too hot to chase the ball around. Where's your partner? He's probably chasing Victoria. <laughs> they don't have much luck there. She fancies Angelique. Well, I'm going to take a shower. We're all very chatty, aren't we? Reaction. We've all been through a traumatic experience. We've performed the impossible, and now we're contemplating the rewards of our success. 
When? All in due course, Kevin. These things take time. I thought it was all arranged. I don't remember hearing that we was expected to remain here forever. You're not. I did tell you there'd be a two-day wait. Now relax. So it's tomorrow then? Tomorrow night you'll all be on your way home. Now that's not long, is it? Well, you'll be able to take her on a little holiday when this is all over, won't you? Minding my own business. I know what you need. I think the excitement must have gone to your head. Sold anything. Bring your drink over and talk to me. I'm depressed, Max. Tomorrow we'll all be feeling better. There's nothing like money to solve problems. You have only one thing on your mind money. That's quite true. And not only that, your eternal scheming. Well, don't we all, Angelique? I'm off to bed. I'll be in my room. If anybody needs me. Woman's as bad as you are. She's only got one thing on her mind. What was that cryptic, don't we all, Angelique, about? Nothing. Your nerves are getting the better of you. Tell me a little thing like that, would they? Why don't you come down with me and have a little drink? I've got one. Not feeling seasick, I hope. Of course not. Angelique. She's down below, isn't she? 
Hey, what time do we rendezvous? Dawn. Well, so we've got to sit around on this thing till then. Well, you were the one who insisted on coming along. Well, it's sealed, do you good. Have a swim. Cool off. dream of underestimating him. Oh, yeah. You be careful when you give him this. Oh, Angelique, there you are. I think this might be a good time to prepare lunch. All right. Me now? No, it's all right. It's only a snack. Just as well. I was too hungry to move. Well, I think you'll find the snack up to Angelique's usual high standards. Well, I suggest we all make ourselves comfortable. Our buyer, Mr. Miller, should be here in the next ten minutes. Looking forward to meeting Mr. Miller. 
I'm sure you are, Chalmers, but it won't be possible. If anyone other than myself or Angelique approaches the car, he'll drive off. I'm sure you can appreciate he wishes to remain anonymous. Well, I think we can safely say that our mission has been accomplished. Not till we see the money. You are a man of few words, I must say. Most of them relating to money. Surprise me, my angel. I thought you were resting. And here you are looking more beautiful than I can remember seeing you look for a long time. Just freshened up, that's all. Is it? Would you like a drink, Fox? Yes, why not? And to think, they never knew you had no intention of selling the diamonds. Of course not. 
Things of beauty are a joy forever. You know, sometimes I find it very hard to understand you, Max. Do you, Angel? Those men were killed for your own personal satisfaction. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Unfortunately, no. When you want something badly enough, you must go out and get it. You of all people know that. He should be here soon, shouldn't he? Who should be where? Your misguided lover. And what you're talking about? Loyalty is something to be prized, Angelique. You should be careful who you do business with. Business? What do you mean? The little man you hired the boat from. Your lover is due back any time now. You may think I'm stupid, but I can assure you that I'm not. It's rather sad. When there's a great deal of money at stake, people's loyalties become divided. You surprise me, Max. You don't really think I want the diamonds, do you? I do. But you could be stupid enough to believe that you're guided by love. I am in love, Max. Then you're a bigger fool than I thought. You think the money would induce him to leave his wife? I hadn't thought about that. I only know one thing, and that is he loves me. I see. From the sale of the diamonds, he'll be able to set up his wife in a nice house, good schools for his children, everything that money can buy. The easing of his conscience and you. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill you both. I helped you organize the whole operation. You organized your own plans. Quite dead, I can assure you. I find it interesting that you hadn't noticed she wasn't her usual self when you came in. Your main concern was the diamonds. That's not true. Isn't it? Well, perhaps you'll find some comfort when you join her. You can't kill me. Why not? Klaus is still alive. Kevin? Oh, he's wounded, but when he recovers, he's going to get you, Stein. Where is he? For half that lot, I'll take you there. Your loyalties seem to fluctuate somewhat, mm -hmm. Dryden. However, it seems I have no choice. You take me to him.
Get up. Hold it. You Stein? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh. 